who is Les Wexner is, is on a lot of people's mind. And I know that you've got a lot of information on that. And in one of your articles I read, you point out that the Ohio Inspector General called Epstein Wexner's boyfriend. Correct. Why, why don't we start with that? What, what do you think <laughs> it means by boyfriend? Well, uh, I think they were looking uh, very carefully uh, at Epstein's influence over Mr. Wexner, who had been a very low-key guy, kind of shy and uh, retiring. And suddenly, uh, you know, in the late 80s, uh, Jeff Epstein shows up in town and uh, suddenly, you know, they're, uh, they're everywhere uh, together. Uh, and there's all sorts of rumors about Epstein. There's a certain amount of local criminal activity. But um, the, we were hearing reports at the time, nothing about underage uh, children, but you know, my newspaper, I was writing for the uh, Columbus Free Press and later the Columbus Guardian and Columbus Alive. But we were hearing tales of you know, sex party with uh, models. And uh, there was some concern uh, by the inspector general by the late 1990s that uh, Epstein may be running a honey trap that is compromising very powerful people uh, to become uh, rich himself. Compromising them in Ohio in particular? Uh, Ohio, uh, New York at the time, at the township, uh, I mean at the townhouse he had received from Originally, Mr. Wexner and uh, later. Right, but I'm thinking if he's the Inspector General of Ohio, I would think that he was concerned about crimes going on in his state. So that's why I raised the question: Does he think that? Well, he was uh, yeah, the crimes, in the, the crimes he were concerned with. Uh, there was a variety of them. Uh, in order to create uh, New Albany, the kind of Stepford, perfect uh, village for the rich. Uh, Mr. Wexner had to secure a hundred million dollars in infrastructure from the city of Columbus. So uh, essentially water and sewage hadn't been extended to a non-existent entity with a contract since the 1950s. But Mr. Wexner got the Columbus City Council with a, you know, a quarter of the people in the city being relatively poor and living in poverty to build him a hundred million dollars uh, in infrastructure, you know, water and sewage, so he could uh, create this model community. In the process, a variety of things were uh, happening. Uh, the city council president, Jerry Hammond, uh, was accused of being bri bribed. Uh, 22 investors put up $10,000 each uh, for Mr. Uh, Hammond uh, to create a brand new uh, jazz club called the Major Chord in the Short North. So that was part of that process that he was looking at public uh, corruption. And while he was looking at public corruption, uh, Epstein's name uh, came about. Uh, also, Mr. Uh, Wexner's uh, accountant, Arthur Shapiro, was shot to death mob style in 1985. And uh, it was also uh, reported that Wexner took a big hit in the 87 stock market dive. And then suddenly the wonder boy, Jeff Epstein shows up out of nowhere. They used to also call him at the inspector general's office, uh, Les's Gale Friday, because mm -hmm. he seemed to be part ballet, part butler, part in, you know, intelligence asset. Yeah, well, let's let's go back through each one of those because there's some pretty serious allegations in involving various conduct in Ohio. Uh, first of all, going back to the original question, what, sexual orientation of Wexner, what do we think it is? Well, at at the time, uh, he was thought to be gay. I, I talked to a woman who used to be his public uh, escort, uh, and uh, she tried to convince me after uh, you know, she had a few drinks, that he was bisexual. Uh, we really didn't write about that at the time. We figured it, it wasn't our business. But you know, he was thought to have eclectic sexual proclivities. Uh, 
Jeff Epstein was thought to have moved the models into his circle prior to his uh, marriage uh, to Abigail. So, uh, M moving female models into his circle. Male, male and female. Oh, male and female. And uh, so what do you think? Do you think that he had a, a, a sexual relationship with Epstein? Uh, personally, I, I think he did. But we didn't think, you know, that wasn't what we were pursuing, only to the extent. And the reason I thought they did is because the state inspector general and the former Franklin County Sheriff Earl Smith at the time uh, both felt that Epstein had uh, a hold on Wexner and it was involving sex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it certainly adds a new wrinkle to who is Jeffrey Epstein if you think about that. And, and, and if there was a sexual relationship with Wexner, I mean, certainly we think that Epstein was a sex addict based on everything that we've heard. There's been things about him needing three orgasms a day, mm -hmm. et cetera, uh, three different massages. And he certainly seems to be a psychopath. So, you know, was he bisexual? Was he certainly uh, just an opportunist? And he saw this as a way to get close to Wexner? That was the uh, assumption of the inspector general's office. That, that he was, it was a way of manipulating Wexner. Yeah, a absolutely. And they were concerned that he, you know, uh, they were looking into whether he was actually blackmailing mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Wexner. But that's, I mean, that's just really fa fascinating though, if that's what was going on. You know, in other words, imagine if Epstein is not gay uh, or even bisexual, but he's willing to engage in sexual relations to create this relationship and, and to use it with Wexner in much the way, same way, perhaps, that he, people speculate that he was using sex to control other people. Sure, uh, very powerful people, you know, in, uh, in both parties. Right, so the main, wasn't the main thing, you know, you wrote a lot about this guy Shapiro's death. Shapiro, you said he was an accountant, wasn't he? Was he also a lawyer? Yeah, he, he was a, uh, a lawyer. Uh, but he did a lot of accounting for uh, Wexner and the Limited. Yeah, so he was investigating uh, the death of Shapiro. And within that, he was actually believing that perhaps that Wexner and or Epstein was involved in the guy's murder, right? Yeah, uh, that Epstein... Uh, Although the murder happened in 85, uh, Wexner was a person of interest. The main person of interest was Eddie DeBartolo Jr., according to the Shapiro murder file uh, that the Columbus police put together. Uh, and again- Who was the uh, owner of the 49ers. Yes, and uh, his father, Eddie uh, DeBartolo Sr., was one of the leading mall makers in America. So there, and there was always alleged mob ties between the DeBartolos in, in the mob, right? Yeah, a absolutely. They were listed in the public uh, document, the Shapiro murder file, uh, as part of the Genovese LaRocca crime family. So, and, and, and just to fill people on, this guy Shapiro, he had, correct me if I'm wrong, he had problems with the IRS. He was uh, about to give testimony in the matter of the IRS versus Shapiro. Uh, yes, and he, he hadn't filed his taxes. And the reports at the time that uh, the county sheriff had and others is that the FBI was trying to get him to roll up on other more powerful people. Right. And the person mentioned were Eddie DeBartolo Jr. and Les Wexner. Yeah. So you got the same same things being talked about now with Epstein's death, that he died in, in prison because people were afraid of about what he was about to say. Here you've got this guy in Ohio that dies the day before he's murdered, right? There's no question he's yeah, murdered. Yeah, it's a, it's a mob-style hit. You know, the closest Columbus lover, you know, they chased him down and whacked him in a cemetery. Wow. And when you say whacked him, uh, what was... Was it a was it a gun? Was he beaten to death? Yeah, How was no, he they they shot him. So he was found dead in a cemetery. 
Yes, which was interesting. That, that's right out of a Scorsese movie, right? Yeah, uh, because uh, the Columbus police technically had no jurisdiction in the cemetery. The county sheriffs did, but weren't considered quite as good uh, in investigations. That's how I got to know the, uh, the Franklin County Sheriff looking into the death of Shapiro. So was he an attorney for DeBartolo? Uh, no, but they were looking at a variety of uh, land deals. Uh, and also they were looking uh, at the rolling stock, uh, which uh, Mr. Shapiro would know about. That is the planes and trucks uh, that came in uh, to Columbus, uh, to Rickenbacker Airport and other places that were custom sealed. So the, according to the Franklin County Sheriff, they were really interested in uh, gun and drug smuggling. So they never found who whacked this guy Shapiro. But it seems right. pretty obvious that it was somebody who was concerned about what he might expose. What is was it ever learned what things Shapiro likely may have known? Well, the uh, the agreement between the state inspector general uh, and, of course, the Franklin County Sheriff was massive uh, uh, public corruption and really uh, guns and arms uh, running, which so it was no surprise when Southern Air Transport, formerly Air America, shows up in Columbus uh, with tax money uh, working for Mr. Uh, uh, Wexner. The, if you read the Shapiro uh, file carefully, uh, what they thought is that there was a deal cut between the DeBartolos uh, and Wexner. As Wexner looks the other way, and DeBartolo and his friends, including uh, you know, Fat Tony Salerno and, you know, uh, in Wash Trucking, these trucking companies uh, get the rolling stock. They get the warehouses and the rolling stock. What's, and, rolling, what's rolling stock? Rolling stock could be your trucks, right? The uh, oh. uh, primary, 90, at one point, 90 percent of the limited uh, trucks uh, were leased to Walsh Trucking, which was a known mob front. I mean, when the subpoenas came down out of New York uh, for organized crime, uh, they went to the Limited headquarters. And the Limited was headquartered in Columbus? Uh, it was indeed, yes. And was that, at the time, one of the largest companies in Columbus? Oh, yeah. Well, one, of the, one of the largest retailers in the United States. You right. know, stores, you know, to this day, it's got, you know, 3,000 outlets in the United States. So by necessity, he's got to deal with these guys, basically, right? Yeah. The, um, it's like uh, dealing with, with, with the he, They tried to deal with other people earlier. Uh, there was another family in town, the Sobel family, that owned a, uh, a clothing shop called Dunhill's. And I know they were approached uh, by people wanting to expand them. They turned it down, and then they had a fire at their warehouse. So then they picked a guy who only had a store or two, uh, and the rest of it is like Horatio Elger's myth, right? He went on to great fame and fortune. But, uh, you know, he was well-connected in terms uh, through the DeBartolos into getting into malls all over America. Mm -hmm. Oh, so he worked very closely with the Bartolos. Wexner did. They're they're the ones that really made the limited by uh, you know giving him access to malls all over the country. Interesting. Um, so yeah, one thing I read, I guess, is tied into this. You're talking about Southern Air Transport, right? Yes. Okay, so I believe it, it was you that wrote that Epstein arranged for the arrival in Columbus of Southern Air Transport. The airline, formerly Air America, was infamous as an illegal gun and drug running operation. Epstein, uh, well, sorry, I'm just getting to a different point. So, yeah, so is th th this Air America it, it was what became Southern Air Transport? Yeah, when uh, Air America 
uh, after it was exposed for what it did in uh, Vietnam, you know, in particularly at uh, uh, in Laos uh, and their uh, fake uh, the fake airline. I mean, they were the airline for the uh, CIA and the covert operations uh, uh, at Long Chen, you know, arguably the third largest air base in the, in the world uh, when they were fighting the Patet Lao there in Laos. Uh, and also, uh, uh, they had Vang Pao, uh, who was, uh, you know, the local uh, Laotian, and uh, they were traditionally uh, opium smokers. So then they realized uh, Vang Pao did, and they created his own airline form called uh, Sin Quan Airlines. Uh, but a lot of the targets for the drugs uh, were uh, U.S. Uh, soldiers in Thailand, in Vietnam, uh, in the Philippines. And uh, Tony Po, uh, you know, the famed figure they used in Apocalypse Now, uh, the, you know, the CIA operative running the program actually complained about it, you know, particularly about the uh, drug uh, transportation. That's the airline that then was spun off. It became a proprietary they sold it to a former CIA attorney, uh, and it became the Iran-Contra airline. Is this the one that then gets involved in the, the Tom Cruise movie? I forget the name of it, though, but uh, where? Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, Cruise, I think, was in the Air America movie. Yes. Uh, it made. But there's a uh, Frontline did a much better uh, uh, documentary called Guns, Drugs, and the CIA back before they were neutered. Uh, you know, they actually did an interview with Tony Poe, among other people. Uh, and, you know, Richard Secourt, who showed up in Iran-Contra, uh, also worked for, you know, its nickname was Opium Air. Yeah, in the Tom Cruise movie, he's running drugs to, uh, where is it, Central America? Yeah, that would be the Iran-Contra. Remember, uh, yeah. I don't know. Hassan Fuss. Exactly. The question was, what was the CIA yeah. running the drugs or just looking to get weapons there because the same airline that was running drugs was also running weapons? Well, yeah, right. my favorite quote from uh, Guns, Drugs, and the CIA, the CIA, one, one of their analysts say, we weren't looking for good citizens. So did right? I mean, they, I mean, they were, uh, you know, they weren't selling, you know, they were very clear. If you've ever listened to it, it's like, we categorically deny we ever sold drugs. I mean, they don't deny they, some of their planes, you know, in terms of getting guns in, uh, they looked the other way when other stuff was coming out. Exactly. That was my takeaway from the movie, that they, they weren't directly running drugs, but they knew it was happening and it was a- Right. They, uh, the they used uh, drug cartels to yeah. run weapons in for their covert operations. So did Wexler end up owning this airline? No, he, uh, it was brought to Rickenbacker, uh, former Rickenbacker Air Base, which still has uh, military operations out there, uh, to make flights to Hong Kong and China, because that's where a lot of Wexner's uh, clothes were coming in from. Okay, so we're not accusing Wexner of being involved in drug running, gun running, correct? Uh, no, there's, uh, no one's accused him of, of that, but people have accused him of allowing his trucks and planes to be used uh, by people in that business. But I think the deal is you look the other way and you're at a much higher level. So this investigation into this whack job of this guy Shapiro, um, it ultimately led to no charges, no convictions. Uh, no, and uh, yeah, I mean, the city council president steps down and the police chief in Columbus uh, gets uh, suspended uh, because he destroyed the Shapiro murder file. Uh, and had the FBI not had a copy, uh, they got a copy early from the Columbus police, uh, no one would have uh, known any of this stuff. Uh, it was uh, theoretically released to me accidentally, unredacted. But uh, I can say now, since he's dead and I'm no longer bound, as David Sturtz, the state inspector general, 
arranged to have it released to me unredacted. And where is that? Is that up on the internet now? Uh, uh, the Shapiro murder file? Uh, no, but you know, what's interesting is you've got a dozen major news entities that have asked for a copy of it and I've uh, given it to. I think I did attach it to one of my articles. Uh, actually, yeah, so it is on the freepress.org. But uh, no one's real interested in that element, uh, sort of, of Jeffrey Epstein and, and Mr. Wexner. Well, and what's your personal belief as to who killed Shapiro, who had Shapiro killed? Well, I'm, I'm going with, uh, you know, the two law enforcement uh, guys, and uh, they think the people associated with the Genovese La Rocca crime family, who had a lot to lose about the relationships in the garment industry uh, mm -hmm. that works and uh, how smuggling works. Well, since we're trying to learn about Epstein, let's go back to this charge that, you know, here's the Ohio Inspector General making the claim that Epstein was running a honey trap, a sexual blackmail scheme. So he would have must have uncovered something in his in Ohio investigation. So I guess it raises the question, as I said before, you know, was Epstein blackmailing Ohio, uh, Columbus City officials or Ohio officials? Well, yeah, I, I, no, they were doing it the old fashioned way. They were buying them up. Uh, in fact, uh, one uh, official, uh, Michael Komen was a fairly obscure attorney uh, who, when Wexner was being questioned and they were thinking about maybe dragging him before a grand jury, uh, Michael Komen, uh, this local attorney, uh, and another attorney, Larry James, emerged and said it was all a misunderstanding, uh, the money going to the city council president, that it really was supposed to go to a nonprofit, the Martin Luther King Center to help poor black children, and that they had forgotten to file the papers. So uh, Michael Komen went from uh, immediately after that uh, to being appointed to the city council, becoming city council president, and then becoming the three-term mayor of Columbus. Uh, if you want to do well in politics in Ohio, you know, particularly Columbus, you do favors for Mr. Wexner. So what do you know about Wexner's wife. I know that she's significantly younger, um, but if-, if, if Yeah, Wexner, 20, 24 years, as I recall. Right. If, if Wexner is, in fact, gay, this would be one of your typical Hollywood arranged marriages kind of thing. Is that what you suspect it is? Well, that, uh, those were the uh, uh, rumors, uh, although I did, you know, talk to his previous escort, who, uh, by the way, claims that uh, Jeff Epstein showed up at her house with a large check and told her never to contact uh, Mr. Wexner again. Uh, she wasn't Jewish, even though she had changed her name and taken a Jewish name. But uh, supposedly, uh, Bella, Mr. Wexner's mother, didn't really approve. Uh, so Abigail was uh, considered, you know, she's a prominent attorney uh, and uh, a much better uh, arrangement uh, uh, for Les Wexner than uh, than was his previous consort, and they but they've had biological children, correct? Yeah, uh, four as I recall. Right, although we don't know whether how exactly they were conceived and whether there was in vitro and that kind of yeah. stuff, right? Uh, although the uh, uh, the woman who used to be uh, the escorts, you know, uh, argued with me furiously not to think of Les Wexner as gay that. You know, he's bisexual. So you said that um, you thought Epstein was already kind of sex trafficking to an extent in Ohio, bringing around both men and women. Uh, do you have Well, any the use of models at, you know, Bendel's, uh, again, uh, Victoria's Secret, and for a while uh, they had Abercrombie and Fitch uh, as well. So. Uh, while we didn't hear anything about underage at the time, we did hear about, you know, parties and models going on at, at the, uh, you know, Epstein uh, house uh, that Wexner gave him in New Albany and as well as uh, Wexner's mansion. 
And you did have the 1996 uh, incident uh, with uh, Maria Farmer, uh, where she claims Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell sexually assaulted her uh, at Wexner's mansion in New Albany. Yeah, and was that ever a criminal charge? Uh, well, Maria Farmer has said that she called the Franklin County sheriffs and she contacted the FBI, but no criminal charge uh, was ever brought. That's the one thing that uh, Mr. Wexner is having a hard time explaining is, you know, because he claims to have no knowledge whatsoever. All right. What about some of the big, the bigger assertions uh, involving um, Wexner and Israel, Epstein and Israel, Mossad, Epstein being an agent, et cetera, et cetera? Well, I, I don't think, uh, uh, my own personal belief, I don't think Epstein was an agent. I think he was an asset. And by being an asset, uh, it allowed him to practice his own eclectic sexual proclivities and to pass uh, potentially compromising information uh, about, you know, politicians uh, that ended up as a prime minister in Israel and uh, perhaps a couple that ended up as presidents of the United States, governors like Bill Richardson and you know, Senator Mitchell uh, and other, you know, and of course, the legendary Randy Andy, you know, Prince Andrew. I mean, uh, if you look at the portfolio he put together of people he might have had compromising information on, you know, some of the most uh, prominent, you know, male figures in the world. And an asset for whom? Uh, well, I, I would think with Southern Air Transport, that would be the CIA. Uh, Mr. Wexner never uh, made, uh, you know, uh, never tried to hide the fact uh, that he supported Israel. At one point, he was listed as, you know, uh, one of the largest private donors. Um, the uh, but sorry, he, so you're saying that you believe that Epstein was an asset for the CIA, not CIA, for Mossad. Well, you know, I, I think uh, Mr. Wexner didn't need uh, Epstein to negotiate with Israel. He had his own ties. He had been a longtime friend. His mentor uh, was uh, Max uh, Fisher. Uh, so he had his own connections there. But possibly, you know, I mean, some say MI6 because of, you know, Prince Andrews. But I believe the clearest connection to Southern Air Transport being brought in would suggest uh, you know, an asset or of some value to the CIA. But the CIA would not seek to entrap someone like a Bill Richardson or a uh, George Mitchell. No, but they traffic in information. The, uh, Even it, information that they glean from our own politicians? Oh, yeah. No, and, no, I mean, knowledge is uh, power. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's their uh, currency. Well, cause, see, I was thinking of Israel when it comes to somebody like Bill Richardson and George Mitchell, because Richardson was uh, UN secretary, um, not secretary, but um, U.S. Uh, uh, Wexner, Wexner himself had already been written up of being in the mega group. So I'm, you know, uh, if Epstein you know, was doing stuff, which is a possibility, you know, with, with the Mossad, particularly he's going to come in contact you know, once he starts hanging around and doing business with a future, you know, a former prime minister. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, I think it was your reporter, I read somewhere that uh, Wexner traveled with President Bush to Jerusalem for a celebration of the 60th anniversary of the state of Israel in 2008. So, he clearly is someone at the forefront when it comes to Israeli issues in the U.S., right? Uh, and, yeah, no, they were giving uh, massive amounts of money, uh, you know, uh, to Jewish foundations. You know, uh, the, you know, the Hillel uh, Epstein gave them millions of dollars here at OSU, et cetera. So they were heavily involved in Jewish foundations. Uh, and the Wexner Foundation, right, did the uh, – 
uh, selling of the propaganda line to attack Iraq in 2003. Yeah, I wanted to ask you that. So let's get into that now, because that one really came out of left field to me. You noted that uh, Epstein helped his mentor, Les Wexner, sell the war in Iraq through the Wexner Foundation. Yes. Uh, I mean, the mainstream newspapers reported that. They apologized. They said it was a mistake, acknowledged it. Uh, but again, they did extensive uh, uh, polling uh, through Frank Lutz, uh, very prominent, usually Republican-based pollster. And, you know, they came to the obvious conclusion that w me and you could have came to much cheaper. Keep mentioning Saddam Hussein and how evil he is. But what they managed to avoid was, you know, that no Iraqis attacked us on 9-11. It wasn't the Iraqis. I mean, but wait a minute. Why? Saudis. Why does? Why did the Wexner Foundation want w war in Iraq? Uh, the uh, I would suppose uh, because Iraq, you know, tried to hit them with uh, Scud and other missiles, uh, silkworms. Okay, so sorry. It's just a, it's a pro-Israel thing that Israel wanted to see the U.S. get aggressive against some of these. Uh, Muslim, Muslim neighbors of theirs um, that have been their foe for so long. Yeah, and that, I mean, uh, if you go back and look at the PNAC crowd and you look at some of the individuals that, that were involved in, uh, in that uh, period, uh, uh, I mean, the notion uh, was Iraq a threat to U.S. national security? Uh, which is almost laughable, uh, but you could make a case that it was a threat to Israeli national security, mm -hmm. uh, particularly after the Gulf War period, and that they were, in fact, perhaps settling scores. Yeah, well, that's a new angle on the Iraq War that I hadn't really read that much about, which is that we kind of charged into that war as a, a because we were supporting some high-powered uh, supporters of the state of Israel? Uh, no, not, I mean, there was debate in Israel itself. I mean, uh, just like there was a debate around Assad, whether uh, with many prominent Israelis saying, leave him the hell alone. You know, we prefer a Ba'ath Party strong arm dictator to the jihadists. But uh, there were other elements in, in the country. Uh, Paul Wolfowitz, for example, right? who was working in the Pentagon as a civilian uh, uh, analysis. Uh, okay, what about uh, Wexner as a victim? He ultimately supposedly broke ties with Epstein around the time that Epstein was charged originally in Florida um, for sex with underage girls, et cetera. And I think the way the story goes is that in the course of cutting ties with him, Epstein had power of attorney. He was doing absolutely yeah, since, everything for, for, for Wexner when it came to Wexner's mm -hmm. finances, right? Absolutely. Uh, after the stock market crash of 87, the notion that Wexner had taken some beating because he had a lot of money in stock and Epstein was good at moving money around and uh, making, you know, in, in many ways, finding uh, tax havens. And uh, it's in the, that period of the late 80s where he gets full power of attorney uh, over Mr. Wexner's finances. So, uh, you know, I absolutely believe, you know, that the vast majority of Epstein's half billion dollars in wealth was in fact stolen from Les Wexner. Well, and if he had compromising information on him, uh, perhaps Mr. Uh, in fact, uh, I was just looking at an analysis today. There's a couple of state statutes. If it's true, if a crime of that magnitude is true, Wexner uh, legally uh, could be charged with not disclosing it because, I mean, that's a hell of a lot of money uh, to be stealing. It has impact, uh, you know, on uh, L Brands, uh, on Mr. Wexner. So it's it's real curious uh, why, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars were stolen. Why didn't you report it as a crime? 
Yeah. Well, that, I was going to ask that question, but let, let's give the people the lead up to that a little bit. So Wexner is now breaking his association with Epstein as a result of the charges in Florida and yeah. in the process of moving over control of his finances over to whomever he was handing it over to. Naturally, an audit, some type of audit is done and, that, and there they find the missing money. Now, I believe that he ultimately somehow recovered it. Yeah, I don't know if he recovered. I don't think he recovered at all. But uh, the the selling, you know, of uh, certain properties uh, and donations back to you know the Wexner Foundation or the Columbus Foundation. Uh, and I know about this period because I was in touch with the uh, lawyers in Florida that were representing various Jane Doe's. Well, I can't disclose their name. Uh, and when they contacted me, they were looking for uh, to recover money. They thought uh, that Epstein was hiding assets and that uh, they thought maybe he might be hiding them in Mr. Wexner's foundations. So they, you know, uh, I, I told them to look at the Columbus Foundation. Well, everyone knows about the Wexner Foundation, a much wealthier foundation that pre existed, uh, you know, a Wexner that goes back farther. Uh, when I was looking at it in the 90s and the early part uh, of, of this century, to, uh, 2001, 2002, and 2003, I found much more money. I, you know, Wexner, his uh, mother, Bella, and then Jeff Epstein uh, with huge donations to the Columbus Foundation. So as they were seeing uh, whether or not uh, Epstein was hiding money. Uh, but it does equally look like Maybe uh, uh, what I had been told by one of the Jane Doe lawyers is that Wexner actually sent a team of attorneys and financial people uh, down uh, to Florida uh, to plead his case that he was a victim and that uh, he wasn't cooperating with Epstein, that he had cut ties and that the money Epstein had uh, much of it had been stolen from uh, Wexner. So we're talking about tens of millions of dollars, but as you point out, he doesn't. I, I think we're talking, you know, hundreds of millions. Hundreds of millions. I mean, but as you point out, he never brings a civil case against Epstein for it. There's no criminal charges. And he never, uh, you know, never reports it. Yeah. So your belief would be Epstein's got something on Wexner. Uh, I would think. I think he's got something on Bill Clinton. I think he's got something on Governor Richards. I think he's got a ton on Prince Andrew. I think he may have something on, uh, you know, uh, the current president. But, you know, I mean, it's uh, if you look, uh, you know, at who he was hanging, who was on the Lolita Express and who, who was at Orgy Island. Yeah. Although uh, Wexner, I guess, willing was, was willing at the time to make statements about it, right? He. I know he's no, made he, he really didn't come out with the theft. Uh, my newspaper printed it on a, on a Monday. Uh, uh, about a month ago, you know, I, I came out and said what I knew from talking to the Jane Doe lawyers. And within two days, uh, he had written a letter acknowledging he had been ripped off by Jeff Epstein. That's and interesting. So you're saying really he didn't. It was, it was in the New York that. Times and Columbus Dispatch. So he didn't he didn't come out with that 10 years ago. He just came out with that now. Yeah, no, he uh, in fact it, uh, he made front page news below the fold in the New York Times, above the fold in the dispatch. If we were to try to guess what Epstein has on Wexner, it would be secret video recordings of him with underage boys. Mm. I'm not sure if it has to even be that be uh that devious uh could be uh massive tax fraud moving money around you know and Epstein's supposed specialty of uh helping rich people hold on to their money by parking it in various tax havens worldwide. Yeah. No, that you're right. That would certainly make sense with Wexner. As far as the others go, uh, Richardson and, and uh, Mitchell, there you're assuming video recordings with underage girls. 
I mean, they're they're on the list. I mean, if I was a law enforcement, that's the first thing I would look for. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I I don't think you know they were uh, uh, you know they were innocent, and I I don't think they were checking ID. What do you think about Dershowitz? He's been very, very, very adamant about denying any, you know, all of the allegations against him. Of course he has. Uh, but again, uh, uh, there's a pattern. If I was investigating or if I was a betting man, I would say that Jeff Epstein had sexual dirt on Mr. Uh, Dershowitz. I, I think he's compromised. What, what do you think happened in prison? Well, you know, at best, someone facilitated, uh, you know, him being able to hang himself. At worst, he was whacked. I, you know, uh, I just don't believe, you know, if they thought he was on suicide watch, I mean, uh, how in the hell does he hang himself? I mean, that, that was facilitated. Uh, but they had taken him off the watch, apparently. I guess the question is, why did they take him off the watch? I mean, there was no reason to. Yeah. And again, uh, as much as he knows, I mean, uh, of course, he'd be a marked man. And you're dealing with a crowd of people, some of the most powerful on earth, and you've got dirt on all of them. I mean, uh, you know, they. Uh, I had predicted he would die in prison. And so I found myself on the uh, Jeff Epstein conspiracy page. <laughs> Half the planet <laughs> thought he was going to be uh, either ha kill himself in prison or be whacked. I mean, uh, uh, you didn't need to know much when you when you you know. I mean, it's classic. The man who knew too much. So, do you, do you believe that Wexner truly cut ties with Epstein at that 2008 point? Uh, I mean, there was reports that Abigail was fairly insistent. Uh, you'll see there's a few transactions, but most of them appear to be donations back or the ret uh, returning of funds towards uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Wexner. Plus at that point, I mean, if Epstein's got half a billion dollars and is hanging around with the rich and famous and can, uh, still use uh, Prince Andrews to get, you know, George Stephanopoulos to come to his, you know, uh, townhouse in New York. Uh, he probably didn't need Mr. Wexner that much uh, anymore. I mean, his goal was already accomplished. I mean, he had the ranch in Mexico. He had the island, uh, you know, in Virgin Islands. He had the townhouse. I mean, uh, he was well beyond Columbus at that point. Right. You know, I think uh, Mr. Wexner is a rational man. When somebody, you know, is involved with trafficking underage girls, you know, uh, I think there were some uh, attempts to return some money in some transactions, but uh, they were not hanging out together. I don't think Abigail would have allowed it. <laughs> Was Wexner historically a Republican? Yes. Uh, but, but he switched recently or what, what is this thing yeah, Don, uh, Donald Trump uh, Charlottesville had a tremendous impact on him when, when uh, you know Trump said there were good people on both sides uh, that seemed to be the breaking point for Mr. Wexner although uh, in, in big cities uh, particularly in Columbus it's it's a democratic machine and he's over the years been able to accommodate himself uh, to the local Democrats uh, but he broke on the uh, national level uh, because of Trump. Mm. Let's talk real quick about uh, Robert Maxwell, because I believe it was you that wrote about Epstein possibly being a suspect in his death. Robert Maxwell is the father of Ghislaine, Ghislaine, I don't know how you pronounce it, but Ghislaine Maxwell, right? Right, yeah, Ghislaine, Ghislaine. Ghislaine. Or Jelaine. Sometimes I hear the S pronounced, and sometimes they don't. But Jelaine Maxwell. Right now, I've I've heard about twenty different versions of the name. <laughs> um, he, talk a little bit about who Robert Maxwell was, and then his death, and why Epstein is is a person of interest in that death. Well, he was. Uh, I mean, there's a book out. Uh, he he was actually uh, he was working 
I couldn't tell you whether uh, Epstein was working from the side or not, but uh, Robert Maxwell sure the hell was and uh, got the funeral to show that he was, but uh, uh, really heavily involved in the tabloids in Britain and got involved in policy. Owning them. Yeah, owning them, changing their policy lines, uh, et cetera. Uh, and was heavily involved, of course, in pension fraud. And then uh, uh, in 1991, he either fell or was pushed uh, off his yacht. And uh, the uh, Inspector General, Nihal David Sturtz, who I know was working with the FBI at the time, uh, said that they felt uh, Epstein uh, was a person of interest, at least somebody they wanted to ask, where were you on that night? Because it's really with Maxwell out of the picture that uh, that Epstein and Ghislaine get together. In fact, the yacht was called the Ghislaine. So do we know the extent of Epstein's relationship with Maxwell? Uh, with Robert? Yeah. But, uh, uh, no, but we know from Nigel Rosser that Epstein was telling people he had ties to, you know, uh, MI6, you know, CIA, Mossad, the question, and that he'd done some weird kind of big money bounty hunter for uh, rich people that had gotten uh, ripped off and supposedly had, you know, had developed ties in uh, England where Mr. Maxwell was uh, uh, quite prominent. So the notion uh, was that uh, they knew each other, but uh, you know, there's not a lot of stuff put together there. I mean, uh, almost immediately, uh, Epstein takes up with, you know, Maxwell's uh, uh, daughter, and she really is the one that opened a lot of the, uh, you know, upper class uh, circles because uh, she is a lady, uh, Lady Maxwell. Did she presumably inherit everything? Uh, yes, yeah, uh, except there's a lot of reports that she didn't, uh, a lot of that money was tied up because of the, uh, particularly the pension fund looting, uh, the crime, and that uh, while she may have had some money is that she was dependent on Mr. Uh, Epstein. Uh, and uh, she sort of worked for him and was, everyone thought for at least a three year period there, uh, was his girlfriend, you know, right, right after the death of the father from about 91 to 94. And then she sort of was downgraded to his, you know, valued assistant. So if he died falling off his yacht, we don't know if he accidentally fell off or was pushed off, but who else was on the yacht? Do we know? Uh, I, hadn't, uh, I hadn't really pursued that, uh, that angle. All I know is the inspector general said that uh, they wanted to know where uh, Jeff Epstein was that night. Hmm. But with someone like Epstein, he may have spread that rumor himself. Uh, you know, we know he liked to say he had connections to in the intelligence community. I mean, uh, people here in Columbus <laughs> were in fear of this guy. You know, he kind of had this, you know, legendary. You know, when I started writing about him, uh, a couple interesting things happened. They sent a courier down from New Albany to pick our paper up. <laughs> it's like, ah, hi, I'm a courier. We're reading your paper. Uh, and then I, I used to get stuff like, you know, notes like, write about Jeff Epstein. You'll end up with a toe tag, implying that I'll be in the morgue and, you know, in the corner will be assessing my cause of death. And, you know, and I, I would always think, is, you know, is that you, uh, Jeffrey? You can do better than that. I mean, <laughs> did you did you ever meet you him? Do. Uh, no, I was at events he was at, just like I'd been at, uh, reported at events where Mr. Wexner is and I've come to Mr. Wexner's attention. In fact, not that long ago, uh, uh, I went out and visited his house to get some pictures with a, a documentary crew, and I got to meet two uh, detectives from the New Albany police and uh, two squad cars, one with two police officers in, one with another, uh, for going down a public road they told me was closed because uh, of bridge problems on both ends. Hmm. So you weren't able to get to the house? Uh, no, I got to the guard shack, you know, got to wave to the guards. 
But in a period of time, uh, the state inspector general had, uh, there were former, he was, he was very high up as the key trainer in the state highway patrol. So there were people in Mr. Uh, Wexner's ex expansive uh, security force that, uh, you know, we're talking uh, to both the county sheriff as well as to uh, the inspector general before he was fired. So in, to kind of wrap things up, where, what's the state of Les Wexner's reputation in Columbus today? Well, uh, just uh, yesterday, right, he was meeting with the uh, uh, L brand uh, 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 board and uh, investors at their yearly meetings. Their stock is down dramatically, uh, uh, particularly the flagship Victoria's Secret, and uh, everyone's attributing it to his association uh, with Epstein. Uh, Mr. Wexner has more buildings named after him uh, than any man uh, in, in Columbus history. I mean, uh, he, you know, he gave $65 million uh, to the... Uh, OSU Medical Center, which is now the Wexner Medical Center. So, uh, you know, I, I always like the idea of Al Capone Soup Kitchen. Uh, if you're going to get involved in questionable activities, make sure you're a good philanthropist because a lot of people will forgive you. Uh, it's also, there's a report that he's lo uh, lawyered up because of questions of whether or not uh, law enforcement and or uh, uh, people uh, with civil suits are going to come in back with him, particularly because of the 1996 allegation by Maria Farmer. Is he the CEO and chairman of the board for Elbrand? Yeah, he's the longest running CEO in America. And chairman of the board. Uh, I, I couldn't remember whether he's still chairman of the board, but I know he's the longest running CEO in America. And he's a major uh, stockholder. So. And a very successful CEO and often ranked among the best CEOs, right? A good place to, yeah, thought of as a good place to uh, work. I mean, he's very socially liberal. And, and, and you know, he's generally a nice guy. <laughs> so the fear demeanor, among yeah. investors could be that he, he's, he's pushed out, forced to resign as a result of his Epstein connections. Uh, which may not be great for the company. Arguably, I mean, he's done quite well with it. So, yeah, I mean, that could be a consequence. I mean, they were noting shifts to uh, other uh, uh, other uh, brands, a couple other brands that compete with Victoria's Secret. Uh, I mean, by coming out and uh, apologizing, there was a slight boost. I think stock was up 4 to 6%. Uh, least reported uh, today. Probably the bigger issue, though, as I think about it, is you know in, the, in this day of the Me Too movement, the last brand you want anywhere associated, <laughs> right, with uh, sexual assault is Victoria's Secret. Right, and you've got uh, numerous reports, at least a couple CEO and former insider saying, you know, Epstein was taken advantage of his friendship. Uh, with Wexner, uh, you know, to claim he was recruiting models for Victoria's Secret. So, you know, uh, we don't know yet how tarnished that brand is, but uh, uh, if it gets permanently linked to uh, Jeff Epstein and, you know, pedophilia, it, it can't be good. <laughs>